Welcome back to Minus 16, the podcast that comes to you every couple of weeks where we talk about, well, everything tech and YouTube. And this week, I think, Daniel, we're going to be talking more tech than YouTube. Yeah, a bit of a change of pace from the last few pods where we've kind of flipped the script and had lots to talk about the YouTube. Lots of it, yeah. Luckily, but it's there's all some new, down a little bit. Yeah, it's there's some new gear. There's, there's some new gear now for us to talk about. Late in the year as well. And obviously, we've just got to say, Alex couldn't join us this time. He has some commitments, couldn't find some time. So you just got me and Daniel this week. Yeah, you double take D. It as it is. Double D, here we go. So, uh, so how have you been keeping it? Yeah, double D. So we suddenly got off to a bad start. Yeah. You can't trust you Aussies. No, not at 7.30 on a Saturday night. No, so yeah, just for reference, we've had to flip all this around to find time to record. So it's early in the morning for me. It's 9.30 on a Saturday morning for me. It's 7.30 on a Saturday afternoon, evening for, for Daniel. But hey, we're here. We're good. That's it. So, so gear. Now, this is odd. Right towards the end of the year, we've both got new gear to talk about and gear to be genuinely excited about. And Ippy Dippy, you go first. Um, I was watching your video this week. Now, first of all, can I just say, we all know that you're a Samsung boy, I'm an Apple boy. But yep. I've taken a massive steer from your channel. I actually sit there and wish that I liked Android. Because it just looks really <laughs> cool and good fun. It's, it's odd. On a Sunday afternoon when you upload, I sit there like having a little bit of lunch, looking at your video, I think, oh, that enough look cool. That interface looks really neat. I love it. Oh, it can do that. And it, it's just infectious, the enthusiasm you've got. And what's sort of begun to piss me off a little bit with a lot of the tech spaces, everybody just seems to be on the download the whole time. What's wrong with things? Why don't we just say, damn, these things are really good. And you celebrate, don't you? You love what I you do. I think it just comes from the fact that obviously I know all the features that it can do, but I just always, I've always been excited by gadgets and gear and tech. And it's just, I prefer to be positive about it than I do to sort of be it's negative towards it all. Such a so, breath of fresh air. And again, thanks, it's if you go around slagging off Apple, you know, and I make a real point on my channel say, look, I used a Pixel um, 8 Pro last year. It was good. I've got nothing against it. It's just, I had to invest into Apple a long time ago and I know how it works and I enjoy using it. There's nothing wrong with Android. If I'd happened to put a foot in the Android camp 15 years ago, I'd probably be very happy. But it's just that thing. I was watching it and I thought, right, I'm going to change the tempo of my channel. I'm not going to, obviously, there's odd things we all say we want to change and want slightly better. I'm not just going to say everything's great. But equally, I've got nothing really bad to say about my 16 Pro Max. There's odd things it could do better, but it's a good phone. I'm enjoying it. It does what it needs to do. I always like to say... If you flashed back like 20, 30 years ago and brought a phone from today oh. to that time period, people would be bewildered by what they were seeing. So I think we, we do kind of live in an age where we're a little bit uh, desensitized to how good the stuff that fits in our pocket is. Oh, And we argue over, oh, the iPhone takes photos like this and yeah, yeah, Samsung yeah. takes photos like that. And exactly. it's like they, they're doing things that nothing no one could have expected them to do 20 years ago so let's all relax so yeah i, I definitely take that approach when it comes to reviewing like mid-range phones as well because a lot of people like to look at mid-range phones and say oh they're rubbish and oh i'm like well the phone's not designed for you it's designed mm. for the person who's never had a smartphone before and is gain, getting their first experience and they just want something that they can low cost afford and get into it but yeah, i'm going to be look taking inspiration from your channel maybe when we talk about the mac minis a little bit later we'll on, on that in a bit yeah we'll get so, to that so you put a message on on the uh, group chat this week saying <laughs> this this se is legit i remember it really clearly i was sitting at editing and you just put this message up it's legit and i then went and watched your video and boy i haven't seen you that excited about a new bit of hardware in a long so what is it that's really got you about this then oh, just when we get going samsung's release schedule i mean with apple uh, we kind of know september iphone probably october november some macs and ipads and maybe something in the spring kind of we know it's set in stone with you since i've known you samsung just suddenly seemed to drop a tablet here and a phone here <laughs> is there a release schedule or <laughs> <laughs> honestly I mean, you worked for them you worked for them so <laughs> there was when i worked there you'd get like a roadmap of like what the year is going to look like. And the thing is you normally only get like a real like top level look at it because it always changes. Like I remember them saying, you know, unpacked for this event is going to be this week. And then with six weeks to go, it gets pushed out two weeks and you're like, great. All our planning's so done. So the release schedule, it kind of is like 
sporadic like there might be a concrete couple you know they're going to have a big flagship first half you know they're going to have a second half flagship launch like s and foldable but around that it's literally anyone's guess like they could out of nowhere decide that there's a gap in the market and drop a phone in just to we're out of parts maybe they've got around sort of the r d factories put it together and we're like well we've got a gap in the market we need to fill it with something and White that's weights. how like the that's how the fan edition phones were born like they just sort of saw a gap and put one something together and now we have four of them and again and the yeah. os i mean we get os released well discussed in the summer at wwdc and then on the phones by september we just know that is that the same kind of thing with with samsung's operating systems uh a lot of it relies on android because android the number of android driver, version yeah yeah, that's the driver. Obviously, they have a, like a, a more consistent schedule, but the Android base is so, I wouldn't say bare, but it's just so like vanilla. And then it's mm-hmm. up to the OEMs of the other Android manufacturers to put their own spin on top. I will say Samsung have increasingly in the past few years brought their operating system releases forward. But this year, they de- they've delayed it a lot like they haven't even got the beta out for the next version yet and last year the beta for one ui 6 had been already out for like two months already by now so there's been a lot of delay uh rumors in, internally i think are that they're just really trying to refine it and get it perfect uh but yeah it's again that's another example right there's no consistency to it they are a bit more haphazard with how they sort of release their their operating systems and and phones it seems like a special edition fold like where'd that come from yeah i'm going to get onto that in 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 just one second one question just came to mind as you were chatting there though have you picked up and used a pixel or an oppo i mean have you seen how their operating systems differ outside of being in a retail store and trying the demo units no right i think yeah i pixels very much like that in between between a samsung operating system and an iphone and i don't know i just find myself getting really bored because like there's the samsung one there's just little things that you can just uncover and all of a sudden Mm. you know how to use your phone in a different way or you can tweak it in a way that other phones don't have that level as so that's just why i never really strayed away or never felt the need to try something else and when i've I've got it set up to a t now i know exactly where everything is and it's just it's just me so let's talk about this SE then, because I say I watched your video and it looks like you're genuinely excited about it. So what is it that's really got you on this one then? I think if I could go back a little bit, like this is the Fold 5 mm-hmm. and then this is the Fold 6. And like when you look at them, yep. they're, they're very similar, mm-hmm. right? And like they're, they're a narrow cover screen, yep. that one's a bit dusty, and they open up into a tablet and they're quite thick. Like, as you might be able to sort of tell if I can hide my face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they've got a thick sort of form factor to it. And it just kind of felt like every year Samsung were just releasing a slightly better version of the Fold. Not really advancing it too far ahead. Obviously, from where they started to where they are, it's a big jump. But there wasn't, like, anything drastic. The reason why I got so excited about this is because it is a drastic shift away and forward compared to what they've been doing. Like it's very thin. So like the, the profile compared to the fold six. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Right. Like, and even when you look at the hinges, like wow. the hinge of the fold SE is a lot slimmer. So it's much so more that, comfortable to carry obviously then. Right. Well, here's the thing, right? Like whilst it's slimmer, it's thicker or wider. So across here is wider than it is on the fold six. So you've got, how's that? Come on, focus. Yeah. yeah I can sort of see it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So in some ways, this is really comfortable because it's narrow, but then this is really comfortable because it's slimmer. Slim, yeah. But I think the reason what's captivated me about it so much is the fact that it's different. And the Mm. unboxing was a really good way to start too. Like it was primo unboxing. From you an, said it really a, took you back, didn't it? It was a proper ooh, unboxing. Yeah, proper yeah, unboxing. Yeah. Like that's what that's what originally captivated me about the first Galaxy Fold was the fact that there was attention to detail and some care put into it. And it felt like this had a very similar beginning. Like Samsung really cared about what they did with this. So did you know this was coming downstream? I know you picked it up via a, a indirect route, and it's only available in Korea, you were telling me, just before we started recording. 
Yep. They only released, or well, there's two markets. One of them's China, but it's like a very, it's branded differently in China. They call it the W25. Mm-hmm. It's just their branding for Chinese foldables. And then in Korea, it's called the Z Fold Special Edition. So yeah, you can only get it in two markets. Um, and Korea is the one where the special edition is. So like there was rumors, I don't know, a few months ago that they were going to do two fold variants and there was some like leaks and that surfaced about software and everything, but no one really know, knew what to expect. It only sort of started surfacing in the last maybe month. And then Samsung announced it just via a press release and then put it on sale, but in, in Korea only. And yeah, I was very fortunate. Um, there was another YouTuber called Michael from Average Dad who just reached out to me and said, hey, um, I'm selling these on my store. I'd really like you to have one um, So and just plug my store. And I thought, yeah, mate, I'll happily do that. And it's gone really well. Lots Where have they pitched it price-wise? Uh, I don't actually I know, know what to relate from, obviously, the Korean market. Because buying it from his store, he's, he's like a reseller. So it's hard right. to sort of judge what the original retail price was. I'm sorry. I don't actually know what the original Korean re- retail price is. It's hard to find and see, like get on yeah, yeah. board, that sort of stuff. I think it ended up being close to just over three, three and a half thousand Australian dollars retail co- in Korean price converted. Yeah. 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 But then yeah. it's a little bit, you pay a little bit more of a premium if you had to try and import it um, from overseas to get one. So in getting into the, the using, because on the video, you literally just unboxed it and began to look at it. Um, I know the big thing you made was about the crease. I mean, it looks like it's virtually invisible. It's flat. Yeah. From unboxing it, there's a, like with the normal folds that Samsung make, the crease is there from the start and doesn't sort of deepen or change over time. It's there. Whereas this one had pretty much no crease from the beginning. Uh, but what I've sort of noticed a little bit is that it, over time when it's folded, it probably is going to become a little bit more pronounced. And that's only with like, geez, not even a week with it now, like five right. days. So yeah, from the beginning, creaseless. It's definitely still better than the Fold 6, even after a week. Mm-hmm. But I'm just going to monitor it because that was my original concern when everyone talks about the Chinese foldables and how they have no crease. My concern was that, yeah, but they have no crease from the start. Once the phone gets used for a long period of time, that crease will develop. Whereas the Fold 6, it's there from the start. You know what you're getting into. Gets no worse. And it it gets no worse. Whereas there might be, I'm I'm have to monitor it. That's just something I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But using it, it's great. Uh, Battery life's good and camera's good. and Camera's a huge upgrade. I did a comparison to the Fold 6 on my channel on Thursday and then a camera comparison on Sam Mobile I know I'm going to weep about the batteries. I know I'm going to weep about the batteries. (laughs) Yeah. The the camera comparison, this has got a much better camera. This has got a 200 megapixel main camera and then an ultra wide camera that has macro capabilities, which is what the S24 Ultra has got. So it's kind of like almost the perfect in between. It just doesn't have the same level of zoom. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's definitely an upgraded camera as well but it loses things. You don't get S Pen support, so you can't write notes or draw things on there. And you also don't get um, an under-display camera. So where the under-display camera on the Fold 6, you can sort of, the, the camera disappears. This doesn't have that. And battery's the same capacity, so it's not not any better or not any worse. Go on in, make me weep. Roughly how long are you getting out of battery? It's not actually as much as you might think. Like. I took this off charge this morning at like 8.30 maybe, and it's on 20, 22%. Okay. And I, but I've, yeah. I've been smashing this all day. Like I've picked all it up. Videos and pictures and. Yeah. So many different things that I've kind of used this for because I just, I just wanted to keep using it. Like it just, yeah, it's yeah, addictive yeah. to use and I want to get to know it and I want to sort of become familiar with it a bit more. It's just really nice. That battery is very similar to what I'm experienced with the with the 16, because obviously they were saying the battery life on this, as every manufacturer does every year, has improved. Realistically, much like you just said, I kind I'm only charging it to 95% now. Trying to, I mean, although obviously like you, I change phones at least annually, so the longevity of the battery life isn't important. I thought as a reviewer, it's probably 
more honest if I try and take care of the battery life. So I'm only charging it 95 and generally it's off the charge about 7.30 in the morning and by 11 I'm down to about 25, 30%, something like that on an average day use. Yeah. Um, so it's guess, not too bad. St- no, standing, I, get, I certainly get a day out of it now and I tend not to throw it on the charger here during the day. I just let it do its thing. I mean, last night I was recording in ProRes, obviously that hits it hard which you'd expect when yeah. I made a lot of fouls in that recording last night. So <laughs> I was going solid for 50 minutes. So there's a lot of chunking editing I've got to do on that. But, um, but yeah, I, so you're obviously going to upload another video about using the, the SE then pretty soon, I'd imagine, are you? Yeah, I've, I had in my head a content plan of about three videos uh, for my channel on it. I've done two so far. So one to go. I think the last one will be like a, a review or wrap up of it. I just don't know when I'll do it, whether that be like in a couple of weeks time. So I give myself the time with it, whether I try and do the YouTube thing and take advantage of the interest in it at the moment, but I don't, and that's not really, that's never really been my style with reviews. I don't just like to captivate and jump right. on the, the trendy part of reviewing things. I like to give it the time of day that it deserves. Well, that's the thing. I, I, it was, it was particularly a couple of camera teardowns you've done that I've watched. Obviously, it doesn't really apply to me because I'm never going to pick up a Samsung and use it, but it's just really interesting seeing another phone and the way it's set up and the way it works. And you really go through the, the weeds. I mean, if, if you're a Samsung user, damn, you know, you will learn so much from watching one of your videos because you just go through everything, don't you? Really peel the back whole... the whole lot. Yeah. yeah. They, those ones are really taxing to do because the edit's really long. Uh, and you can imagine editing podcasts. It's kind of like that, but every few seconds you've got to chuck in a screen recording, line the screen recording up with the words you're saying. It, it's a whole thing. Okay, I'm going to break in here and talk about the video I uploaded last week. I know you were kind enough to watch it. It was the first time I've ever done benchmark testing because I had these two Mac Mini sitting here, and I thought they're pretty similar. And the only way that I could really begin to show them apart was just purely numbers. So I came in here a week ago today, last Saturday morning, I started doing benchmarks. That video took me about 50 hours from start to finish in editing. Yeah, it was painful. By Tuesday, I started Saturday. I worked all day Saturday, most of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, uploaded it Tuesday, uploaded it when Tuesday or Wednesday. But when I, no, it was Tuesday. By the time I finished Tuesday night, I'd done just short of 50 hours on it. And I was shot. I was and it was odd. I'd become so attached to that video. I felt really hurt when it didn't do as well as I wanted it to, which you, you'll know the feeling. There's yes. some videos you think this one deserves to do well because I've actually put the full beans on this one. I've given it everything I've got. But has it but, done well in search later? Because just for, my, for myself, I can see myself needing that video whenever I decide to pull the plug on whether I do M4, M4 Pro, yeah, or which we're going to talk about as in a I've minute. recently been looking at M1 Max laptops, like whether I just, that has, that video literally sparked the idea in my head that maybe I don't need the Pro, or maybe I could get a laptop, a MacBook instead. Well, well of, I'm hoping my So time, it was worth it. But, yeah, well, that's, that's what we're going to be get, talking about in just a moment's time, because Daniel's actually going through a real sort of brainstorm at the moment about which way he should go for a week for editing on. And we're going to sort of talk about that in real time. We, we had a, I saw messages on the chat this morning. I thought, no, no, let's actually talk about this. So we're going to get onto that in just a sec. With that video, I hope the timing could be okay. Because obviously we've got Thanksgiving coming up. We've got Black Friday coming up. The holidays coming up. And it's the sort of thing, if people are looking to buy a Mac Mini, I think it will come up on search. And it's still getting some views now. It's picking up, grad- it hasn't died, put it that way. So I think it's that kind of video that will do well but it's interesting what prompted me to mention that was you just said about the curve and for a very short time there was a curve on the mac mini you could just breathe mac mini and it would just fly and it, but as with everything tech that passes super quickly <laughs> yeah it does you know next it's week's video is about the iPad fleeting mini moment because that's gone you know that that yeah has, people will still buy it people will still look at those videos but that real hot interest everything just moves so damn quickly in our in our worlds isn't it you know what was hot one week it's, it's, it's hard to predict what will stay and like sporadically one video might just take off without notice. Like yeah. I had, I did a video comparing the ultra to a really old smartphone from 10 years ago and it would just, it was just doing steady numbers, nothing to, and then all of a sudden bang, it just took off to the moon for like a week and then got itself to 50,000 and now it's kind of tapered off again. And like, that is just a genuine crazy sort of thing to see happen 
because you never know when your video will just do it. That's why it's worth doing every video with maximum or near maximum effort because yeah, yeah, yeah. if it does get pushed out into the algorithm a bit again, the quality will help take it over and, and push it on again. So yeah, well, worth it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I've, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about benchmarking. I learned a lot about editing. I did 3D motion graphics for the first time, so I learned how to use those. Uh, and all of that was done on the M4 Pro Mac Mini. The whole video was recorded, edited. The whole thing, start to finish, was done on that. And I just wanted to make that a real thing. That this is how I'm using it. You know, that's as much as I'm ever going to throw at it. Wab audio, I say 3D motion graphics, some new uh, graphics at uh, Final Cut Pro 11. I mean, that was the other thing I got lucky with. Final Cut Pro 11 is causing quite a storm at the moment. So there was a bit of that in there as well. Yeah, I mean, this thing was an absolute beast. And picking up again from what we talked about, your enthusiasm, the lovely thing from my point of view is everybody, everybody has got nothing but good to say about this Mac Mini. Apple have really got it right. They've nailed it. The Price, only design. The only thing that you could probably say about it is that upgrading the storage is oh. a price nightmare storage and ram it just yeah. turns it into i think quinn snazzy who mm -hmm. your mate yeah you know maybe <laughs> we'll patch things up maybe yeah <laughs> will he come on he the pod did, do you think go on you should reach he, out get him on the pod <laughs> he could maybe maybe we could have reach it out. out reach out <laughs> it's actually i'm trying to lay the groundwork already anyway um <laughs> He did a video where he talks about how the Mac Mini is a great deal until it's not, where it starts off as a really good deal, but the moment exactly. you try and actually make it something that's usable long term, it becomes as expensive as a great desktop computer. Yeah. So there's lots, there's lots I get that this is a great device, and this is where the struggle is coming from, David. This is where right. we're going to get internal. Into it. Yeah, it's just right. Let's talk. Right, let's talk about Daniel's dilemma because it could be you're listening or watching this podcast, and you're thinking about changing your Mac, and maybe do some video work, maybe do some audio work. So let's climb inside of Daniel's because Daniel jumped on with me a couple of weeks back, um, talking about the Mac Mini and why you were, you know, from a somebody that hadn't used a Mac, why you were thinking this might be the time to change. So where are you at then? At the moment, you edit on a. The moment I edit on a Galaxy Book 4 Ultra, Core i9 processor, 32 gig of RAM, 4090 mobile graphics card internal. So it's got all of the things you could want from a window side of things as far as video editing goes. Mm -hmm. the, the timeline never stutters. When I'm plugged into power, I should point out, whenever I'm running on battery, it's almost impossible to edit smoothly, I should right. say. Um, I have to put it into high performance mode and the fans kick in and then the battery lasts for like an hour and a half and you then worked. I'm done. Yeah. So I yeah. always have to work at my desk plugged in somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm editing on right now. So when this Mac mini came out and I'm like, well, I'm editing at my desk already. Why am I needing this laptop? You know, what's the whole driving force of needing it? And I, yeah, I travel, but I'm not ever really editing videos on the go. Like I'm away a few days at a time yeah. and that's about it. And then with how portable the Mac mini is, I could literally just buy a second power supply and bring a portable monitor and that could exactly be me. That. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then I sit sound... there, sorry, oh, sorry. I sit yeah. there, I look at it on the website. I spec it out the way I think I want it. So where are you thinking of going? Well, so here's the thing before your video, it was M4 pro. 24 gigs of RAM, mm -hmm. one terabyte SSD. And that's about 20, 2200, I yep. think could, could be a yep. bit more. $2,200. I'm like, that's, that seems fine. Then I watched your video and you were like, the M4 does video editing and exporting just as fast. I'm like, well, why do I need the M4 Pro? And then I go back and I spec that up and I maybe bump the RAM up to 36 gig of RAM and again, one terabyte. And it works out about the same, 2200. And then I'm like, but what if I need to edit on the go? So then I start looking at whether or not Premiere Pro can cross pollinate between Windows and Mac. Like if I can export the whole project and then take well, it with me. Valid point and actually. Apparently you can, but there, there might be some like underlying like code issues that might cause an issue, but on the whole, it yeah, is made to be able it's to creative cloud. So part of me thinking it should be. Yeah. So to they, they, they say you can. So I'm like, okay, great. But then I'm like, but my 
laptop lasts for an hour and a half. So I'm like, well, I can't do it on my Galaxy Book for Ultra because if I need to edit at a coffee shop or in the airport, I can't. So I'm like, mm-hmm. well, what what MacBooks are there? And I'm like, MacBook Air. Oh, your and Mac, then your you Mac guys is getting fried. <laughs> and then you guys thought, hey, you're not retiring the M1 Max yet because that's a workhorse. You've never heard the fans. I'm like, well, maybe I just look for one of those. And then, and then this is where I'm at now. I don't know. I, okay, so. <laughs> Quite a lot to say on that. So um, you're absolutely right. Spot on with what well, you said and what Quinn said about the Mac Minis. The minute you start to spec them, they get expensive. And I think I said towards the tail end of my video, if you're going to go out and buy a decent monitor, okay, I've got the studio display and the Mac Mini with the one I've got here, it's three and a half thousand pounds. Same sort of price as a MacBook. Apple are no fools. They know how to get every last dollar out of you. So if you're going to spec it up well, use a good monitor, you're still going to spend good money. That said, if you have got the peripherals kicking about, can I, I just do. say also, I'm I'm probably going to get myself a new keyboard to go with it. $250 for a keyboard from Apple. It kicks. Anyway, that's the one side. That's just going to spoil for that and I want a new keyboard. <laughs> that That's by the by. <clears throat> right, so you've got the peripherals. Then it's deciding, when I began looking at your messages this morning, to me it was quite clear you were trying to make a decision between working at a desk or working on the fly. Now, obviously, if you're going by the MacBook, you have got everything you need. And you can work on battery. There won't be a timeline issue at all. Uh, if I'm working video-wise, I'd probably get a t- three hours of decent editing time out of the MacBook Pro. It's good. Okay. I never think about if I'm. I, I wouldn't ever expect to go and do a complete edit on it. But if I'm heading out, I don't ever take the power brick with me. I know I can edit as much as I want to, and it will. There's no stuttering. There's no delays. It's all in full playback mode. I'm even rendering in the background because I've switched now, as you know, from Premiere to Final Cut. Um, and honestly, it, it's a beast. And no fan noise ever. Even all those benchmarks. I had five Macs here doing benchmarks last Saturday and there wasn't a whisper of noise from any of them. So then it comes down. Uh, I don't know. Are you getting good deals on the M1 Max? Because if there's deals going on the M1 Max MacBook Pro, then that would, I would have thought, be the, the way to go because you're getting a brilliant display stunning battery life one rig that goes wherever you go and no matter how much you'll convince ourselves oh you can put it on an ssd and take it with you there's always a conflict somewhere you know there is it's never seen like, yeah it's never you know it's much better just to edit on one rig from start to finish agreed so if you're getting good because obviously now with the m4 macbooks being out i would imagine some pretty good deals to be done on the m1 max MacBook well i found I've got one that I found three and a half thousand Australian dollars, which is roughly if you halve it, that's how much it is in pounds. Wow. Wow. Right? Oof. Is that is that good? It's a sixteen Man. inch one yeah. terabyte. Okay. Um, do you edit off SSDs or do you edit off internals? Well, here's the thing, right? Again, this is another layer of complexity. I upgraded my laptop and I put a two terabyte SSD in it because with windows laptops and with this samsung one there's a spare slot to put in yep. a ssd mm-hmm. so i did that so this is currently a three terabyte machine mm-hmm. and i edit off that i have been able to edit off um portable ssds before it's not a problem um but i do like pref- doing it straight off the machine itself mm-hmm. so do i so like that's my that's my rationale but look it's not the end of the world like i said at the moment i'm editing all from my desk anyway and i have a thunderbolt hub here yep. with lots mm-hmm. of stuff plugged into it um so it's one terabyte 64 gig of ram wow um, m1 max 10 core cpu 24 core gpu and i thought that is not it's brand new sealed Oof. so it's not even a refurbish or anything like that it's just brand new so, look, so it's three and a half thousand australian dollars i'm like okay do i get that plus maybe a desk Mac mini, but I'm like, what's the Mac mini for? Because if this can work and function exactly. in the same way, like why would exactly. I need a Mac mini? I think I just like the Mac mini because of its aesthetic. It just oh, it's looks gorgeous. Imagine it'd be like a nice desk ornament, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not paying like 15. Yes, it is. Yes. That is, <laughs> that is a hundred percent what that's doing. Get it off, get it off the screen. <laughs> like I, I have one in my cart. Like I have one in all oh, Apple call it a yeah, bag, yeah. but yeah, I have yeah. it in the bag now. It's just sitting there. But then that's when I'm like, well, if that MacBook Pro is brand new, I, the one you saw me using in the video is three years old now, and I've hammered it every day since 2021, eight, 10, 12 hour days, and it is as good. Well, you saw the speeds; it was yeah. still the quickest machine just on X4. Okay, only by about five or six seconds. But there is, I mean, flipping it around, the 
the, the props goes to the Mac Mini, M4 Pro Mac Mini, insofar as I couldn't tell that I wasn't using my MacBook Pro. Now, when I did this, I was thinking, would a Pro chip be as good as a Max chip from three years ago? And it is. So who's going to need the M4 Pros and the M4 Ultras when they come out? I don't know who's got a workflow. And maybe if you're editing in 8K or something, maybe if you're a really heavy coder, I don't know. For the work I do, I wouldn't ever need a Pro or an Ultra now. Uh, sorry, a Max or an Ultra. But if you can get that that MacBook Pro, it's, it's slightly better, man, because you've got 64 gigs of RAM. I've got 32. Yeah, and I I wouldn't even know what to do with 64 gigs of RAM. Like this you, laptop never, has, has 32 so much, now. So much headroom. Grab yeah. it. You've got a beautiful display. Okay, you're buying a machine that is three years old. But to be honest, it's Apple Silicon. It's got quick um, Thunderbolt ports on it. You've got good I.O. You've got an SD card slot on there, which I assume your laptop has anyway, because I know it's, it's got a mic. It's got a micro SD card. This slot. Got full e I'm looking at it now because it's what I'm actually recording this session. OK, on. so it's got HDMI. It's got a full SD card slot. It's got two Thunderbolts on one side, one Thunderbolt on the other side. And it just flies. And the has it got a full is... size USB? No. No That's USB C's, a... uh, no USB A's on there. No USB so A's. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So at the moment, my camera's going via a cam link, via an adapter. That's the only thing. I th think I'd prefer a third USB C port over a USB A port anyway. Yeah, I'm. I yeah. I, I mean, we're moving forward. Everything will soon be USB. You know, everything you buy Correct. now is going to be USB C. So honestly, if you can get that for like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred pounds, which I now understand, I paid three thousand five hundred. For mine, well, it new? would be three and a half. It'd be about seventeen hundred, seventeen hundred yeah. pounds. That's fifty percent of the price I paid. <laughs> wow. Okay. So that's depreciation. Okay, it is three years old tech, but you saw like, that's where I hope that videos come in handy. That three year old machine was still kicking ass with a brand new Mac Mini. And that's the thing, right? Like that's. But the, here, look. Okay, here's my, here's another layer. I'm just going to insert <laughs> another layer. Oh, this man's in pain. I know. I can feel Sorry, it. you're confused. I know. This Dr. is Dave almost is like here. my my buying therapy. Um, <laughs> it's I, as a Samsung YouTuber, I've like made my not living, but I've made a, a really big sort of stake in the ground of being the all Samsung creator. I edit on Samsung mm -hmm. book for ultra. I'd like, it's like my, it's like part of my brand. It's your USP. Yeah. 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 And then there's quick share that I use. I, and to be fair, I do use quick share quite a lot. The only thing is this week in particular, I had a lot to make. Like I made a lot of SE videos. I made a lot of, Sam mobile videos, shorts, and the laptop just struggled. And I feel like as a business, it was like time consuming to not be able to edit in the way I wanted to. Like if I wanted to pick up my computer and go work on the lounge, I couldn't mm. do that mm. because this is limiting my ability to work on the move as much as laptops are designed to do that. So yeah, like there's just things that have happened and I'm like, do I wait for the Snapdragon Elite to be put into a Samsung laptop and then try and do it that way? Or do I just bite the bullet? And that's why the Mac Mini was such a good like entry-level product for me because it was like dipping my toe in the water. And then I could make content about it from a Samsung perspective, like, hey, look at this lifelong Samsung user switches to Apple and just see what happens. But from yeah. my perspective, I mean, going slightly away from the topic of buying purely, if we talk about your channel, your brand, this year you made the decision to switch to using a camera to shoot on. And Correct. Not, so, you know, because, yeah, I love the fact that you stayed so firmly in the camp. Everything I do is Samsung. Brilliant. And it's got you 50,000 plus subs and your channel's flying. But there comes a point, we all know, where you just need to improve and move on. And it came the time you knew that you needed to improve the camera quality. And no matter how good any of the phones are, it can't be a DSLR camera. You know, they still do what they do look at really this, well. Look at this now. Yeah. I mean, I'm on a Canon. What are you shooting on? So, so uh, this A6700. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully our cameras look good. And that's why we're both shooting on proper dedicated cameras. So you've made that transition. And if you decide for your quality of life and for your speed of editing that you need to edit on something that's not a Samsung, A, apart from the videos you make about telling people what your setup is, no one's going to know what you edit on. Mm. It's quite and, and it's a quality of life improvement and it's speed. How long does it take to export, for instance? If you're doing a 10 minute oh, export, exporting's not an issue. Like it okay. actually is probably the fastest that I've seen. Like a 10 minute, 15 minute export is between three to five minutes. Like okay, it is similar, then. very similar. It is fast, but you hear the fans going throughout the whole editing process, which is painful. and 
and it's just painful. Like I don't like even I can hear it now. You probably yeah. can't hear it because the microphone won't pick it up, mm. but it is spinning. And we're all we're doing is on a, yeah, you're on a streaming. browser. Yeah. I'm just on a browser with a camera plugged in. Like, it's not yeah. like it's doing anything too demanding, but the fans are like, Whoa, what's happening. Yeah. And obviously here I'm sitting in church silence. I think the time from what you're telling me, I think the MacBook pro is for you. That sounds a steal. It sounds well, I'll be curious to curious to hear what the listeners think so yeah. they, they can comment Daniel, below if they're watching on YouTube. Out. Help Daniel out because we're going to turn this podcast around real quickly. Um, so from when we recorded it to going up should be no more than about four or five hours. So if you're listening or watching, help Daniel out. Get involved. Yes, please. Let him know what he should be doing. Please And do. if you live over in Australia, you know, working on currency exchange rates, and just let me I mean, from my point of view, when I bought this, I, 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 I bought the Studio Display and the M1 Max MacBook Pro at the same time three years ago. I moved away from desktop editing. I'd always had iMacs. And I just decided it's post-COVID. I thought, okay, I'm not always at the desk. So for the first time ever, I bought a laptop best thing I ever did and my whole although I do spend most of my time here now and do probably 90% of the editing here I can just as easy pick it up and take it back now and finish it and it is just the nicest feeling no power bricks because again I'd only be tidying things up I'd never expect to go home and, and do a full edit but if I know I can just sit there uh, it's honestly and and from the point I know you use your what did you say your equivalent of airdrop was uh quick when, share Quick share. I mean, presumably you could quick share the, the files that you need onto an SD card or onto an uh, external. Just plug that into yeah. the Mac. I can definitely do. The thing is, it's it's not a lot now anyway, because I use the um, DJI pocket right, yeah. for a lot so of that's B-roll. Got a on there. Yeah. It's got a micro SD, so I can just put that into a... Um, I got a hub with a micro SD yeah, port yeah, exactly. in it, so I just yeah. plug that in. So I'm I'm probably not as bothered. The the thing that would probably suck is when I do camera comparisons because I have to quick share a whole bunch of files all at once. I'll obviously yeah. have to speak to Alex and but look, nothing's decided. Work, right? I yeah, haven't yeah. decided. I'm still in that wrestle in my mind, but it's good to know that that's a good deal because I wouldn't oh, know what I'm looking at. Darning deal. I say you know I can put figures. I know I spent three and a half thousand pounds on a machine, not quite as good as that brand new yeah okay and it, it's and, it, and it, honestly the thing lasts and lasts and lasts and to the point of when apple really sting you for storage and memory upgrades i think it's because they know people aren't going to be changing their macs because these things they've shot themselves in the foot they're too good mm. most people will buy one of these and last for 10 years <laughs> yeah and well i mean look i mean if we talk about someone we'll talk about later marquez he still hasn't upgraded his m1 max although i think exactly. he said he was tempted by the m4 max m4. but but yeah, the M1 has still been using it. And like he's running like a multi million dollar empire. So that was a beautiful segue, my friend. First of all, I'm going to leave it dang there. Help Daniel out with his buying angst. We need Please. to get this boy sorted. <laughs> so let's let's just wrap up the pod this time around. As I said, it's a little bit lighter on YouTube stuff. We don't want to keep rehashing the same things. Yeah, people are still paying for subs and buying views. Good for them. And I'm like you, losing sponsors because of it. I'm now telling sponsors, at least my views are organic and you'll see that I've got genuine engagement. There's real people watching my video, but it, hey, you know, it's your, if, if you don't want to pay the dollar to be on a channel that's got actual people watching it, that's not my problem. So moving on from that, I'm going to speak first here and risk alienating a lot of people. I'm going to try and be as erudite and as full in description as possible. I think Marquez is an absolute legend. He was one of the first people I started to watch on TechTube. Obviously, he's not just apple as we know he's all tech i love his dry delivery i love the detail he goes into i love it's not overly produced by way of silly graphics that you don't need he can be really on point and he can deliver some great videos however i very vividly remember early this year in january this year he in one of his videos said i'm going to step back a bit now uh, i'm not always going to be fronting the videos i want to concentrate on my frisbee Look, the man has been at it 15 years. He's built one of the biggest channels out there. He's got nothing to prove. We all get bored of doing the same job day in and day out. My take now, I'm waiting for the, the blowback on this in the comments. I think he's got bored and I think he's got a bit lazy and he's made some mistakes trying to fleece people for wallpapers. That's not a mistake. He tried to see what he'd get away with, in my opinion. And once there was some some knockback on that, then he put up the apology video. Uh, no, he's too smart. He's been in business too long to make that mistake. And then, obviously, every time I open up uh, any kind of socials, now you get the Ridge adverts coming on. I get it. We're all looking to make money. And I say I've got a huge amount of respect for him, but I think he's just got to that point now where he's lost attention to detail. And you mentioned earlier on this whole speeding thing. Mm. That 
is unforgivable. Right, I'm going to stop talking there because I've lost enough friends. Let me hear what you say because we haven't talked about this at all. At no. All. <sighs> okay, there's a couple of things that I'll get out here. I am probably not, you know, I think to, to criticize someone for driving, I feel like a lot of people have made errors on the road. I have made some pretty bad mistakes as a young kid while driving. So for me to then say, oh, going 96 in a zone where there's potentially children, that's obviously, that that's disgusting. How dare you? He should quit. He like, cancelled. I would, I would say that everyone would make mistakes while driving on the road. You know, I've been caught at a red light texting and driving, got a $300 fine. Like, that's like a simple one where you're like, yeah, great unlucky um but do i deserve to be cancelled over that no i think where Ms. marquez's sort of mistake came was that his team tried to cover it up they could obviously see that it was wrong and rather than i don't know putting a disclaimer in the video or saying something about how this was a mistake and he, sh he shouldn't have done it they just decided to blur out the speed because they knew that it was a mistake but as I also said too, credit to him later, he seems to be the only one that rather than doubling down on their mistakes and doubling down on not apologizing, he does come out and sort of admit that he's messed up. And I think that whilst, you know, it's obviously bad things come in threes and he had his problem with the, um, the wallpaper app and now this, like, is there one more sort of hammer blow that kind of puts a nail in his coffin for the end of the 2024 year. People aren't letting this go though. The comments of his recent videos, everyone is talking about speeding and going in school zones and like he's copying it. So like he did, did the mistake, the consequences he's now facing. Absolutely. I th also, that video was a completely paid video, wasn't it? It was for- It was sponsored. The, sponsored, the, the entire thing. Now people, you and I both, I, I don't think I've ever done a, a, a totally dedicated, I know we're talking about different stratospheres of success here, I get that, but the ethic is the same. I, have you done a dedicated video yet? Yeah, I've, I've done, I'm trying to be very careful with my dedicateds. I don't try and take on something that doesn't fit the, uh, I guess, the channel in terms of tutorials or showcasing something that aligns with the Samsung brand. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, But I have done them. 100% done them. And I and I and I would. Yeah. Absolutely. I I, I I don't think that's a crime for him to no. accept cuz like if you look at Linus Tech Tips half of his videos are sponsored videos by the brand. Austin Evans. I, he just did one sponsored by Micro Center where he goes into a Micro Center and buys parts to build a PC. And I love Austin Evans. So that's not even a slight against him. So and Marquez no. barely does sponsored videos at all. Like if he does they're very well disguised. So uh, I, I, I've got an issue with that, John. And this week, uh, one of my other favourites, Peter McKinnon, put up a video. Do you know, because you're in, in the business, you kind of get to know the flavour. I saw the title, something like "I'm not bored with drones" or something. I said it's going to be sponsored by DJI, and sure enough, <laughs> it's yeah. only a five minute. It was, we all get it, and fine, you get. You know, it's how we make our living, how they certainly make their living. So I haven't got a problem with that. With that speeding one, though, it was the fact that it was blurred on the driver's side. It got missed on the passenger side. Now, you and I, when we make a mistake, it's us. We record, mm. edit, produce, script. He's got a team fact-checking. He's got a team before that thing goes live. How has it slipped through? I don't understand how it's just become a little bit sloppy. I know we've seen it with Linus this year. As you say, the big channels every now and again. He seems to be riding that. I always thought he's the sort of bloke I'd love my daughter to go marry. He looked like a real lovely gentleman. A real, he didn't seem too egotistical. Kept his fit. I've got so much respect for him, and I hate to see when somebody if he wants to let the channel go and sell the channel on had his time fair props you know he's, he's made the, the best channel out there or one of the best channels out there um but it's just quite clearly that his eyes off the ball at the moment and these mistakes can come back to hurt him yeah and i think you know he's paying the appropriate consequence where people are making memes at his expense and people are putting things in the comments I don't think his channel should be deleted. I don't oh, think God, he should no. stop making videos. But no, a lot of no, people no, no. Are, are calling for his head and saying, this is not a role model for your kids. And I I think it's crazy to say that because, you know, in a world where certain people can become president of the United States after the things that they've done, I don't think it's fair for Marquez to sort of get, 
Yeah, right. You got to have some perspective over his what he did. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a he's a young guy. He's got a sports car. He went fast. Are you telling me, or are people trying to say that if they were in a similar position, or if they've known people in similar positions, that they haven't done that? I I like to think. Look, I like like you said the positive. I like to think the best about people. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I think Marquez probably ju- assessed his environment saw that there was no one around. He might've even decided to go on a quiet day when there's no one out, mm-hmm. maybe early in the morning or yep. really late in the afternoon. And he's chosen to do it in a time when he knew no one was going to be there. And Tried it just so it. happened that he did it in an area where there was a sign with someone holding a kid's hand and it happened to be recording it at that moment. Yeah. And then happened to not be sort of picked, picked up, up in the edit, edit or yeah. they picked it up in the edit and thought Marquez why were you speeding in here? Oh, there was no kids there. I made sure. Oh, we'll just blur out your speed. Like there's just so many little innocent things that could have led to that happening that I think the reaction was appropriate initially, but then it's just dragged on for too long. Like I think now, respect, like, like I said, perspective. Perspective is That's needed a very good point. Yeah, yeah, over yeah. what he did and he probably needs to reflect a little bit. I think you're right. He probably has taken his eye off or has become a bit lax with how he runs the channel. And you can see that just even with his thumbnails, his thumbnails have become right. They don't need to be more than what they are, but there's no real thought or sort of effort behind it. And the cinematography isn't as grand as what it used to be. And he does everything in the studio, all of his filming, all of his B roll, all of his thoughts are curated in a carefully controlled factory studio environment. And yeah, so I think yeah, perspective I, is needed. Well, also, I mean, he does from time to time look at Samsung. I know he doesn't ever do their their, their, their earbuds. <laughs> I know you might yeah. mention that, but but I mean, he does look at their phones. I think he uses a I think he uses Samsung. Certainly, at the Apple event when he was, I told you when he was recording his, his notes on a Samsung. I said you can't have that in frame at Apple. At this is the thing. Yeah. So he, does you, when he does a Samsung review, do you think it's a good review? No, I don't particularly. I think I don't think it's a good review because he he keeps it super surface level and mm. he skims over a lot of the things that makes the phone unique to use over something else. Mm-hmm. And then when he reviews things like the watch, he'll just not get the information right. And again, it's it's a combination of him not sort of digging deep enough or him just thinking, look, I've used this phone for two weeks. The review needs to come out. I'll just put down some thoughts and say it versus Mm. him living with it for long periods of time and then getting to, but also, and this is what I made mention that sort of got me the beef with Quinn to begin with was it doesn't do anything for his channel. A Samsung review versus an iPhone review or deep diving into iOS. It's not the same for him. It's imbalanced. Mm. Like he Mm. just did a video reviewing all of the Apple intelligence features. Samsung had Galaxy AI for six months before Apple even mentioned AI, and he didn't touch the features once, didn't talk Mm. about them, didn't make any videos, didn't say, oh, let's look at what Galaxy AI is, nothing. And I don't blame him for that because his Apple intelligence video will do more than what any of his Samsung reviews ever would. It's interesting also, you mentioned his thumbnails. I've noticed that. You know, you and I have this thing drilled into us. Your thumbnail's got to catch a tent. It's got to be, you know, it's the first window people are going to see of what content you've made. You've got to hook them. And you just look, the thumbnails are so just, oh, last minute, face, holding device, done. Yeah. It's just as sort of, yeah, these are, go. that's, let's go, his latest ones, right? Look at his <clears> Apple <throat> intelligence one is just yeah a picture of the phone and his face well, also, is in front of it. The other one with the M4 MacBook Pro. It's literally just putting the silicon logo on a MacBook screen. Yeah. Yeah. But I think as again, like as he has a bit of a style and people will recognize that yeah, of course. and click on it, but it's, it's not, it's almost like he's realized that that's not going to gain him anything anymore because he's already at a level where he doesn't need yeah. to do that. Yeah. Put a video. Up. Well, I remember he did the video about his solar panels on his house. <laughs> If you and I, hey, <laughs> I've invested like 50 grand into these. If I make a yeah, video, I can pay for it. Exactly that. I mean, if you and I put up a video about our heating system, can you imagine? 
I've got a fan heater I bought this week. Maybe I should review that. <laughs> Absolutely would tank, and then but, we'd have no chance. But look, again, I think Daniel, I because we're both you know, coming. I, I like to think this podcast is going to be have a positive feel and vibe to it, you know. And I think we're, that's coming through. So this isn't meant to be a downer on Marquez at all. I come back to the fact I've tried to model my delivery on his style. I've, I've absolutely won't hide behind that of the people i watch i love how calm and concise his delivery is and how on point he can be nothing but respect it's just maybe he's got a bit bored and a little bit flabby with his attention to detail and if he wants to do this now just focus it he can still be the best absolutely i think the the other thing that sort of has happened parallel to this is there's been a lot of mkbhd defenders and they say that he gets picked on a lot and everyone makes videos and just leave him alone. And I, I can get, I get that. Right. I'm very much staunch of let people be who they are, but when you are at his level of interest, he becomes part of pop culture. Like he yep. transcends beyond YouTube and becomes a pop culture reference yep. and people should be allowed to commentate on that. They should be allowed to say their thoughts, put it in video form. And I think when you get past a certain level of fame, that kind of becomes part of the territory. As long as the the commentary is respectful, as long as the commentary isn't calling him out for things that he doesn't deserve and just becomes factually based, and then you can add your sort of layer of opinion to it, I don't think there's a problem with commentating on someone who's part of pop culture. Like Absolutely. He, yeah. he probably ex like expects that he probably doesn't love it, but I think at that level of any sort of YouTuber, once you sort of go past the 1 million plus sort of level, you should be, ex should be expected that your notoriety is beyond a certain level now that people mm -hmm. will make commentary about you. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's not done in a way that's sort of really negative or bashful, I think just let it, let it play out. And the other people don't need to rush to his defense. Like he's old enough to be able to handle it for himself. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a thick enough skin. He will have been through, okay, maybe not this, but you know, he's ridden the wave long enough and had success that you and I can only probably dream of. Yeah. So, you know, he's, you know, and, and fairly so, as we both keep saying, you know, he's built a channel based on success and he's but, been doing it. But he needs to so, stabilize now. He needs yeah, to stabilize absolutely. it. He needs to get back into some consistent form. He needs to have a bit more, his finger on the pulse, a bit more attention to detail to make sure he doesn't slip up to that degree again. Because, yep. Any sort of when he's got an unblemished record like he has, any slip gets looked at through this like crazy tight prism. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll draw a line on that one then. So <clears throat> I think we're probably cooked on this one. I think yeah. all we need to say we need to help Daniel out. Let's get back to us. We need to help Daniel out and get his buying conundrum once and for all put to bed. Look at the man; he's, he's in pain. I we really help him out. <laughs> I'm so lost. <laughs> so so it's... this. this podcast is going to go live very quickly after this very discussion right now so help the man out because he'll still have that in his bag at apple.com he'll still be looking at this macbook pro he'll still be thinking can i ever deviate from being a purely samsung channel what am i to do help him out i've said my please piece. so daniel it's we'll put turn. a link to your last video about the se in the show notes uh, i'll put a link to my video where i spent 50 hours wasting my life that'll be in there as well we'll be back in a couple of times i think we've got a guest on next time as well i think okay patrick ram i think patrick Ooh, ram will join us next time i'd love to speak to patrick well, you're going to get that chance he's awesome. coming on I'm, I'm pretty sure next time around uh, and you're going to reach out to quinn so we'll have quinn before christmas as well we'll look forward to that <laughs> <laughs> i am going away over christmas <laughs> Uh, oh, we're missing the Christmas tree. I'm just realising we're missing the Christmas oh, tree. Oh, I'm not in the I'm not in the lounge room. I'm in the bedroom <laughs> this time. So there's only one Christmas tree in this household. Thank you very much. Okay, so Dan is off travelling. So we'll, we'll look at schedules and so on a little bit down yep. the line. But uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks' time with another minus sixteen. And don't forget, help Daniel out. Thank you. Thanks for watching, listening, and we'll catch you very soon. <laughs>